hey what's up guys as always thank you guys for tuning in welcome back to another video the new update has dropped okay and apparently this is gonna be like the last final major update until backpack battles 1.0 so this is gonna be a groundbreaking new meta everything update so basically what they have done what the backpack battles devs have done they added skills into the game right so i'll show you guys on the screen i don't think the beta this yeah that's not gonna be it. yeah so i'll show you guys on the screen right now if you go on the beta mode right or full depending on when you're watching you just type in skills there are now a bunch of skills for every uh single class i believe 20 items worth of skills now the way that skills work is that on round four and on round 10 you have the option of selecting a skill now you're gonna have three options in there right um and then you just choose one of the three options in the skills uh or in in, in the side the shop uh for your skills and there are also class specific skills for example these are the skills for the ranger for the reaper for the pyromancer and for the berserker each one has two and then you also have your universal skills that everyone has access to right now with these skills only certain skills will be available around four and some skills will be available on round 10 and then there's also other skills that are available on both of the rounds right so for example spicy banana can only be found on round four now if i go over to let's say dark ritual that can only be found on round 10 right so that's pretty much how skills work some of them um i believe let's say this one right here shielded that can be found around four and 10 you know what i mean so some skills can only be found around four others can be found around 10 and then there's others that can be found on four and 10 right so it, it gives a little bit you know not too much rng that you're not going to get the skill that you want but a little bit of it because i mean it is back bad battles right there is rng right <clears throat> But yeah, that's basically how skills work. And today we're we're pretty much gonna go over them because this is something uh really freaking cool. I don't think it's something very overpowered, I suppose. Like, you know, I'm a person where I like to be able to plan out a build. With this new system, I feel like you can't really plan a build around a skill because you don't know what skill you're gonna get when you reach round four, or especially when you reach round 10, you don't know what skill you're gonna get, right? So you can't really make a build and expect to get a skill, right? um which adds a little bit of rng versus just you know the opposite right but anyways we're gonna go over all the skills in the game that are new and i'm going to talk about my thoughts on them what the potential is that i believe there is and yeah that's pretty much about it and yeah we're gonna start off with uh we're gonna start off with just the universal skills let's just you do that right up front universal skills first one being spicy banana which whenever a banana activates there's a 30 percent chance to gain one heat and once stamina is used you heal for three i feel like this could be really good i'm not even gonna cap whenever there's a new uh food item in the game or anything like that i automatically think of excalibur utilizing a bunch of bananas on excalibur first of all you're gonna get a bunch of stamina right because whenever you know your your excalibur procs all the bananas proc you're gonna get a bunch of stamina which means that opens up the opportunity to rock additional weapons right so like i could definitely see a spicy banana build utilized with probably an unhealing build because now when you use one stamina you also heal for three right and then you got your unhealing build that three is now damage and then you don't have to worry about stamina because you got a bunch of bananas you also gain heat so everything just becomes faster 30 percent chance you know what i mean as long as you have the mana generation to utilize your excalibur along with your unhealing staff you should be perfectly fine you should be perfectly fine but yeah spicy banana this is you can get this item uh, i believe on round four right so which is pretty early i feel like the round four items you can use those items and kind of plan and build around them like if you were to get this on round four obviously you're gonna try to get as many bananas as as, as possible you know what i mean so so yeah that's pretty much how spicy banana works and i think that's excalibur build obviously i think it's probably the best way to use it next thing we have is smelly wall which the star garlic items gain plus five block and when you have 20 block gain you inflict one poison this item, I feel like it's really good because garlic itself gives us what? Three, three block after four seconds. This pretty much is plus five, which is almost double. That's that's what eight. Yeah, eight block, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight block. That's almost triple the amount of block that a garlic is giving you, right? Not to mention you can have a lot of these and you can put this on an excalibur build you, you can have a, a shit ton of block and then you can combine this probably with the uh the amulet the uh, the block amulet the stone amulet and then all of that block you're accumulating 
not only turns into poison now, right? Because 20 block gain inflict one poison, but also empowerment, which is just even better. So it, it, you have super garlics. You basically have super garlics at the end of the day. That's really what it is. You have super garlics, you know, which is, is pretty freaking incredible. Um, but yeah, you could also rock this with any item that gives you block. You could rock this with vampiric uh, armor. You could probably just have a bunch of freaking uh, uh, stone skin potions and just have like a bunch of poison at the start of the game and block, you know, combined with a dark saber even, you know, and dark saber doing what? Like, I don't know, 20 damage at the start of the game. If you manage to get that much poison and block like that's that's, you know, smelly wall could be really, really good. But I do think the best build for this would probably uh, just be an Excalibur with a bunch of garlics and just go from there. Have a, a shit ton of block, I, I think would be really, really good. Next thing we have is Piggy Pinata. I did play around with this and I kid you guys not, it's really good. OK, so basically when you have a pig, destroying a piggy bank generates items instead. Right. And then whenever you enter a shop, piggy banks have a 20 percent chance to explode. Obviously, you want to rock this with a hammer build. You know what I mean? Um, now my highest gold that I've ever gotten out of this was, um, was nine. So a piggy bank, when I had it, 20% chance it exploded when I entered the shop and it gave me nine gold worth of items, right? Which is a lot more than the five gold you would have gotten from just the hammer cracking it open. You know what I mean? Which is a lot more. So I feel like if you get this, you get this around four as well. You get this around four, your economy is set. All you have to do is a bunch of but just buy a bunch of pigs, or maybe you can even pivot to a hammer and dagger build if you really wanted to. And your economy is absolutely golden. It's set. You don't have to worry about economy anymore when you get this thing. Every single time that piggy procs, just imagine you're just getting nine gold, nine gold, nine gold. Like that's a lot. That's a lot, especially if you get the hammer, uh, hammer build. Like that is a lot. You know what I mean? Very good item. Um, next up we have is investment opportunity. The first time I read this, I didn't think it was that great, right? But whenever you enter a shop, you now gain two gold, which is pretty much two piggy banks, right? And this is a five gold. All of these are five gold, by the way. All of them are five gold. So it's better than pig, right? The amazing part is star items use a buff, you gain two maximum health. Now that's each buff that's being used this has a lot of versatility with it a lot of versatility first off we can take excalibur for example excalibur uses 11 11 uh mana to activate which means if you have investment opportunity on excalibur that's 22 maximum health that it's gaining every single time it activates and that can go with any build in the entire game um, another good way of using this is with Phoenix because Phoenix uses up your heat to, uh, to heal you, right? So not only can the Phoenix heal you, it can also give you a bunch of maximum health, depending on the amount of heat that was used. That's another way of using it and pretty much any creative way that you could think of using buffs in like a mass quantity investment opportunity is right there, right there. And even if you don't use it in that, you know, aspect, the plus two gold is still pretty nice economy wise. You know what I mean? Um, you can also use this for like uh, unhealing build, right? Um, with giraffes, infinite heat scaling and the healing build giraffes using up the buffs, using up the clovers. Boom. Not only are they giving you buffs, but they're also increasing your maximum health, right? Which is which is great. Absolutely amazing. But yeah, this this uh, is a versatile item. You also get this around four, which is really, really good. Um, and yeah, this is just a great item in my opinion. Next up we have is super spacious, another economy item, which uh, bags appear more often in the shop and have a 50% chance to be on sale. Very nice. You no longer have to worry about bag space at all. Um, bags are going to be on sale, which is phenomenal. Everybody loves bags on sale. Whenever you see a bag on sale in the shop, you automatically buy it no matter what, right? So it's a really good item. And it also comes with that a 20% faster or rather um, the star items trigger 5% faster for each free diamond slot, which is four free diamond slots. So your four items can trigger 20% faster, which isn't crazy, right? But it's, it's you know, it's it's a nice little passive that it has um, while you're also gaining that economy because you're getting bags on sale. You know what I mean? Very nice. Next up is we have slime time. Now I didn't play around with this item a lot. Um, but basically what it does is gooblings can now appear in the shop on by it generates a gloomy and every four seconds it advances all gooberts and gloomings by one activation now if you guys don't know what a gloobling is is basically a new item in the game go goob blings boom that is a goobling 
Um, three act it has two star slots. And whenever it has three item activations, it basically heals for five, right? It's like a mini goober, pretty much. Now, in essence, when you look at it, it's like, okay, it's decent. Now, there's two amazing things about the gloomy. The first one is that you can use this item as a combination inside of Gooberts. That's the first amazing thing. We can now craft Gooberts, right? And these things cost, what, two gold? You get two of these, they cost two gold, and you get a Goobert for four gold, right? Which usually costs you six, you know what I mean? So that in itself is really good. The second thing is it's a pet item. And that goes hand in hand with Snake, right? Hand in hand with the Snake item. Don't know where it's at. Don't know where snake's at but oh wait i gotta uh there we go reaper and where's the snake snake is so, snake is somewhere up in here i can't see it for some reason but yeah it goes it basically goes hand in hand uh with snake because snake increases your maximum health for each pet item um there it is so yeah snake uh started a battle gain four clovers and 55 maximum health for each star pet item if you guys don't know before or right now actually because this isn't even now this is so beta right now one of the best uh builds for reaper is rocking snake with uh the dragons and uh fencing fencing rapier which this will now just make that build a lot easier because you could just buy a pet item for two gold instead of spending 10 on the egg or six on the toad you could literally spend two and get yourself a goob goobly and it just makes the build better right so yeah another really really uh really 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 uh good item okay and the next and it also helps out with um getting um the super goober goobers right because you can get um, as many goobers as you want just buying this thing and then combining um yeah next up is we have shielded now shielded doesn't seem all that great i'm not gonna lie you also get this on round four and there's a possibility you can get it on round 10 um, in slime time, you also get down round four. But yeah, so shielded is uh, star shields have a 15% chance to block, right? And then the star armors have, uh, or they trigger 30% faster. Now, right off the back, you, you just think like, that's not all that great, right? Until you realize the different builds that this can benefit from. Like all the different combinations of shield and armor. The most notable one being uh, vampiric armor with moon shield, right? Because you get the mana, you get the block survivability it's all great right so i feel like a lot more shield combinations are probably going to come out especially with the other items in this list which i will show you guys momentarily i feel like shielded by itself isn't all that great but if you manage to combine it with you know the armors and the shields it can be really really good really good really really good but yeah that's pretty much shielded you get that around four and round ten next up we have stoned which I feel like this was added in the game to add more of a reason to use Stone Golem, personally. Which I'm not opposed of because I do like Stone or Golem. Um, but basically, Stone or Stone Golems, whenever they deal damage, they gain 40% of the damage back as block. Which, if you're rocking a Stone Golem and it's maxed out on Bag of Stones, because Bag of Stones increases the Stone Golem's damage by 10 damage. By default, it does 5 to 10 damage. It's got 4 star slots. So if you max that out, that's doing 45 to 50 damage. And 40% of that being block is actually pretty damn good, right? Um, that's like every single time it hits, it's giving you 20 block. This combined with the... Um, the, the stone emblem gym emblem gym uh stone badge combined with this not badge hold up I, i'll show you guys i'll show you guys i think it's uh let's see stone nope don't see it um where is it it should be somewhere in the bottom down here haha -ha, this guy amulet of steel combined with this that's infinite empowerment that's that's pretty much what it is infinite empowerment because not only is the stones themselves gaining you block stone golem is gaining you block that block just goes right back into empowerment right not to mention the stone golem itself gives you empowerment every single time it hits on top of that and it can insta proc and give you 150 block and that's probably what five empowerment at the start of the game very very nice if you manage to get that combination of items very very nice it's really niche don't get me wrong it's really niche right like you have to already pretty much be looking to do this build in the first place or really utilize it to its maximum capacity but if you manage to do that very 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 nice and this item you can get this on round four so you can get it early and you'll be like okay i'm just gonna go stone golem build boom go to stone golem build be happy right 
So yeah, boom. That's pretty much how stone works. Also, while you have blocked, it's a 40% chance to prevent your hits from being critical or if prevents you from being hit with a critical hit, which is pretty nice. Pretty nice. I'm not going to lie. A little bit of survivability. You know, everyone can use a little bit of survivability. Um, and then next we have hardwood, which this can only be found around 10. Now, the star common melee weapons deal 200% damage. And at the start of the game, you gain five block for each uh, star common item. Now, personally, my personal opinion is that it's a super niche item that pretty much only it benefits every class, right? But it, realistically, it only benefits Reapers. I'm not Reapers, but Rangers to the max, right? So it's, it's only common melee weapons. Now, if we look at every single common item in the game, the only melee weapons right is the broom pan and wooden sword and no one's gonna rock a bunch of pans because of the stamina usage so your only options is rocking a broom or a wooden sword with this right and usually if you're going to rock a bunch of swords or a bunch of brooms preferably a bunch of swords because they take two less uh spots in your backpack you're probably just gonna go hero long sword and who benefits the most from that is probably going to be ranger with clover right so more than likely what a lot of people are going to be doing is buying wooden swords at the start of the game without the intention of realistically using them unless they get that item around 10 and if they get that item around 10 you best and believe they're going to be utilizing that 200 additional damage right because i, I believe uh hero longsword uh, gives your weapons an additional what 10 damage something like that let me uh I believe so. It, it leave its additional ten damage. Hero longsword. Where are you at? Where are you at? Right here. Oh, it's four. I wow, I was way off. That's why, because the damage is ten. But yeah, so start a battle. Uh, weapons gain what four damage, and then um, was that like five to eight, five, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. So five to eight damage, roughly two hundred percent more. We're looking at roughly fifteen with lucky clover. All those hits are critical. You're looking at thirty damage. Uh, every single time your wooden sword hits not to mention any other items in the game that you have Buffing this it just makes them better literally makes them way better It's like a, a better version of the short bow, right? Because there's already builds out there utilizing hero long sword with short bows and daggers and Adding a wooden sword to it doing 200% more damage. It's just good. It's just good. It's just good like the burst the ranger burst builds have literally gotten better essentially they've gotten a lot better um if you can get that <laughs> if you can get that but yeah next up we have is mana mastery which mana orbs gain plus seven random buffs in every five seconds you uh you will gain three mana and it triggers 20 percent faster for each magic item i've used this a little bit my take on it is that do not expect for you to utilize that mana orb buff procking unless I don't know but I, I just i would not expect it honestly um it's it's a pretty solid item for mana generation like if you don't have an item like you don't have mana orbs or you don't have a cauldron or you know you're you have mana items that need mana but you're lacking the mana generation it's a pretty solid item to pick up just to gain that mana generation to make your build a little bit better um but the gaining of seven random buffs never happened with me i feel like the battles ended way too fast before i even got up to the 30 I think it's 32 mana threshold for mana orbs to actually proc. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't rely on it just for the mana orb procs alone. Um, and if the battle is going to last that long, more than likely those plus seven buffs aren't going to make the difference in your battle. Um, if it's lasting long enough for you to even get the mana orb proc in the first place. Um, but it is a pretty solid item just for mana generation. Um, so yeah, pretty nice. And next item we have is the power of the moon. This i believe is one of the best skills in the entire freaking game let's start off with the moon armor activates inflict one blind right you can rock this with lightsaber i kid you not i went against a build with the power of the moon and he had a moon armor in it a build or in it a game i had 30 blind on me 30 blind he had no item to benefit from blind i could not hit this guy at all literally could not hit this man at all granted i didn't have anything to cleanse blind right but it's a really good item right really really good especially if you can utilize that blind with a lightsaber maybe even a dark saber you know what i mean anything um 
it, it's it's really freaking good and then you also have moon shield which reflects debuffs every time it activates that in itself is really good and this is what i was talking about earlier utilizing shielded right because now your shield has an additional 15 percent chance for that reflection to happen and then your armors are also 30 percent faster for your infliction of uh of blind which really really nice not only that fatigue starts three seconds earlier but the big thing is when fatigue starts you heal for 50 percent of your maximum health now the key word here is heal it is heal it counts as a heal which is really good for an unhealing build because if that unhealing build is activated in this prox 50 percent of your maximum health will be dealt as damage back to the enemy and this also works with the unholy ghost i think that's the name of it the ghost item where uh 30 percent of your healing is damage that works too so if you have items in your build that increase your maximum health and you have the ghost or you have a unhealing staff staff of unhealing this is bread and butter it's literally they're made for each other they are perfect for each other okay perfect right 600 health this procs 300 damage straight to the enemy 300 damage straight to the enemy i don't think they're gonna survive 300 damage in fatigue mode just boom done right very very good very good power of the moon phenomenal right very good especially with a healing build you can rock your moon armor get that mana generation and at the same time you're inflicting blind very very good um next up we have the smithing for dummies which on buy will generate you a west zone keep in mind this is an item that you get on round four now this one you get on, you powered mode you can get this on round four in ten so you can get lucky get it early and plan out your build or you know not nah, right uh but yeah so yeah smithing for dummies you get this on round four um on buy you get a whetstone which it doesn't sound that great but keep in mind this is round four so you still have wiggle room to pivot your build or maybe you're already trying to get yourself a hero log sword or maybe even a falcon blade or a burning sword right so getting that whetstone can be fairly beneficial if you're you know if that's the route that you're going for and if it's not you can pivot in round four you know um and then star crafted items gain plus two damage and use 20 percent less stamina I don't really care about the plus two damage i'm not gonna lie but that 20 percent less stamina i do care about that and i do think that's good i do think that 20 percent less stamina is really nice because that can last you till the end of the game the plus two damage probably not maybe to help on round four because that's when you get this item anyways however that minus 20 percent stamina 100 chance 100 chance you can utilize that until the end of the game which is really really nice really nice um so yeah now we just got to look at these class specific items we're going to start off with the ranger acorn ace acorn colors have more star slots items affected by acorn color use minus 10 percent more stamina and crit wood staves use 50 percent less stamina this item is insane literally insane um and if you guys don't know acorn color extends the range to a five star by five star area five star by five this the acorn ace was meant for items like or meant for builds that use a bunch of weapons right just like the hammer and dagger builds or well the daggers don't really use up stamina right but the hammer build does the hero lone sword the bow and arrows the wooden swords and they're all critting and not to mention crit wood staff itself uses 50 percent less stamina right you can rock this without crit wood staff you'll be fine you can rock this with crit wood staff it'd be even better you know what i mean so yeah basically you have a bunch of weapons that don't use stamina and they're critting like like crazy literally like crazy it's a great item literally a great item you can get this item on round 10 so for anyone over there rocking a bunch of hero long sword daggers or bow and arrows or wooden swords or anything like that this is your best friend a hundred percent great item very great very great next up we have mark's woman which this you get on round four um range weapons deal with plus 15 percent damage the attack plus 15 percent faster and half plus 15 percent accuracy this is not bad this is not bad mainly because um there's a lot of builds out there that utilize the bone arrows that are really really good but also it's not just bone arrows it's ranged weapons right so this can work with magic staff because that's a ranged weapon 
This can work with Ruby Whelp because that's a ranged weapon. Anything that classifies as a ranged weapon, this can work towards that. And more than likely, you can pivot and go for a build that utilizes a ranged weapon and can utilize that additional damage, the additional attack speed, and the additional accuracy, right? It's just a very versatile weapon that can pretty much be used in almost every single build when it comes to Ranger, right? So yeah, those are the two Ranger items that uh, are now added into the game. And for Reaper, first up we have is Mushroom Farm. Now, I haven't used this, but I do plan on it and I'm kind of excited about it, I'm not gonna lie. So, whenever you enter the shop, if you have at least three mushrooms, notice it didn't say Flying Arlick. If you have at least three mushrooms, generate a Flying Arlick, right? So if you have three, you get a free Flying Arlick. And that's a free two gold. Basically, first of all, it helps out with your economy right because it gives you a free flying arlet like that you can instantly just sell for two gold and at the start of the battle all your mushrooms trigger 30 percent faster which is pretty freaking nice now the reason why it doesn't say flying arlet and it says mushrooms is because the game added a new mushroom into the game there is a new mushroom which is the doom cap i love the doom cap now every 3.5 seconds yes it's fast every 3.5 seconds it will inflict three poison and reduces the opponent's healing by 10%. And that is every 3.5 seconds. It's not like you just buy this and the, the healing is reduced. No, every 3.5 seconds, there's a 10% reduction. It goes 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, all the way up to 100 where they can't even heal anymore, right? Not to mention you're already inflicting them with three poisons every 3.5 seconds. That's why it says mushrooms because you can have this and flying arlic counted towards that. Now, to craft this item, it takes uh flying arlic and a demonic flash pretty expensive demonic flash probably only gonna see two per game right but it is a good item doom, doom cap is a good item you can use this with the excalibur probably with a uh, death scythe and you could probably cook up a pretty nice build you know what i mean pretty nice build probably rock on the pananomium something like that it, it could it could be it could be pretty dangerous not gonna lie it could be pretty damn dangerous pretty dangerous all right let's look at the other skill that one is Dark Ritual. Now, I did use this a little bit. It didn't do so very good, but maybe I just don't wanna use it. After 13 seconds, it's a long time, inflict 20 debuffs and gain 10 vampirism. Now, it does trigger 20% faster for every star dark item. And not to mention, I mean, heat is a thing too, right? But anyways, it does trigger 20% faster. Now, if you're gonna rock this, more than likely you're probably gonna rock Mr. Struggles, probably get yourself a bunch of dark items to actually utilize this, right? And more than likely, you're probably going to rock the Dark Saber because it's a dark item and it can benefit from the 20 buffs that have been inflicted after the 13 seconds. And it gives you a little bit of survivability because of that vampirism. So overall, I don't think it's a horrible item. Uh, I have used it, but I did not use it with the Dark Saber. So have yet to do that. Probably. I, I feel like it'll be good with Dark Saber, honestly. I feel like it's going to be pretty solid just because it, it synergizes so well with it. You know what I mean? But yeah. Those are the two uh, or three, counting the mushroom, new Reaper items. And next up, we have Pyromancer. Um, the first one is called the Ever Burning. Now, this makes it where Burning Sword and Burning Blade use 30% less stamina. That's already pretty solid. Already. Let's just start there, right? And after six seconds, you gain one heat for each flame. That's pretty damn nice, right? So, first of all, you use less stamina which means your weapons can attack faster. So you have a little bit more of a lead way for your heat generation. More than likely, you're gonna be rocking Friendly Fiend to increase that heat generation. And on top of that, after six seconds, all that heat you've accumulated doubles, literally doubles. And if you're rocking Friendly Fiend, 100 damage to your dome, dead, right? Very nice, very nice item. And you can get this item, I believe on round four. So if you get this, Round four on the Pyromancer, you can go ahead and just pivot right into this specific build with Friendly Fiend, probably Burning Blade, Rock 2 Burning Blades if you wanted to. You know what I mean? They feed off of each other, right? Very, very nice. And next up, we have Solaris. Now, Solaris is kind of like the moon, uh, the moon one, um, but it's for Pyromancers, right? So after 10 seconds, you cleanse 20 debuffs, your sun shields blocked damage 30% chance to gain one heat and sun armor whenever it uses up heat you gain 10 blocks so it makes sun armor just a little bit better so not only does sun armor heal it also gives you block right and the sun shield 
Whenever it blocks damage, there's just a 30% chance to gain one heat. So you get a little bit of a heat generator out of your sun, uh, sun shield now, which is pretty solid. You know, I feel like sun shield kind of just wasn't that great. I guess not a lot of people rocked it, um, especially for the use of dealing damage for a block that you gain, right? It's just, you know, uh, but now since solar Solaris is a thing, you, you know, it gives it a little bit more use, you know, a little bit more use out of it. Uh, but yeah, those are those two items. And then next up we have Berserker, which I haven't used Berserker at all. So yeah, <laughs> but uh, basically you get extra Angie, which uh, whenever Battle Rage ends, three seconds later, you enter it again for 50% of the duration you were in it once before, which I feel like is kind of like a second wave in a way. It, it, you know, it, it might not be bad because there's a lot of instances use, utilizing Berserker where um, you enter Battle Rage mode and the game is pretty much tied. But as soon as you leave Battle Rage mode, you lose. You know what I mean? So if you get this, you get that extra wave of Battle Rage. That might be the difference between life or death. Honestly, it, it really could be just that extra duration. You know what I mean? Can go a really, really long way. Um, but yeah. And then after that, you get Dragon Set, which every one second during Battle Rage, you gain heat. So you're just getting faster and faster and faster every one second. Um, and if you have Dragon Scale Armor, Dragon Skin Boots, and Dragon Skin, or just Dragon Claws, you have plus two lifestyle for each heat up to 20%. Now you can utilize this more than likely with Anvil because Anvil has that in, you know, it has that heat generator built into it whenever you're like doing your combination of items. Um, you can rock that with this and just purposely get your armor, your claws, your boots, and just utilize the lifesteal up to 20%. 20% lifesteal is really nice. And then you, you, you're going to keep your heat and just going to keep getting faster and faster and faster. So overall, it's not really that bad of an item, honestly. I feel like the fact that you need the claws and the boots and the armor might not be the greatest. Um, but I mean, it's not like those items are useless, obviously. They, they, they can be useful, right? Um, but yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And those are uh, those are basically all of the items that were now added to the game. Um, they're pretty much skills and I could just run like a little bit of a, a dummy game real quick. Uh, just so you can guys can um, actually see, I guess, the skills in action, I suppose, which won't be horrible. So like round one, blah, 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 do whatever you want. And we're just going to skip through this probably gonna lose more than likely unless i win i'd be flabbergasted oh nah we're definitely losing this yeah 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 but basically what you want to do is just play the game yeah you're basically just gonna be uh playing a game as much as you can doing whatever starter build situation that uh that you prefer and then you're just gonna go into your craft round four is gonna happen and you're gonna get your items and after that that's what you really decide or have to decide on what am I going to do? What what route am I going to be taking? How did I win this with no weapon? I've got absolutely no idea. Absolutely no idea. How did I win that with no weapon is uh, that is crazy. Let's do boom. We'll do boom, boom. Actually, no, this is better. Boom, boom. West something can go there. Boom. What is this? Round three. So we got one more round to go. Probably gonna lose this one. I mean, we did get leather armor on sale pretty damn early. Not to mention we kind of got, you know, shell totem and everything. We're not, we're, even though I'm bullshitting right now, we're not doing all that bad. But yeah, you get to this screen, you get your three items. So I got stoned, I got spacious, and then I got slime time. And then you pretty much just buy whichever one you want. I'm gonna buy slime time because I've never bought it before. Boom. You start off with a goobly and you get a goobly in the shop, which is pretty freaking awesome. Um, fanny pack. We can go ahead and get that. And then I could just rock a goobling right there. And then get myself a goobert. See? Boom. Now I have a goobert on the way, which is freaking amazing. And yeah, that's pretty much how it works. Um, combination with the goobling is great. This is an easy way to get yourself a flying art like at the beginning of the game. Um, and then you're probably just going to go into a snake build after that. And then utilize your goobers and, and everything. It's just great. It's just great. So, like, even though the, the items are random, I mean, you can still utilize these items to make a better build, right? Which is which I think is pretty damn amazing. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. As always, hopefully you guys enjoy the new items. Um, it, you know, hopefully it's great. And uh, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time and have a great day.